Hello again, this is UML Operator. All right, we're in part six of this multi-part series. Today we're gonna to be getting into wireframing. In our last session, we talked about UI design. When I, the elements that I used, the screen tooling that we used, I used for UI, user interface design. Wireframing you can use for, of course, user interface design or UI design but I tend to start to use this for user experience design. And there are other tooling to do a better job than Sparks for user experience, even UI design. And we'll talk about those later in this channel, but we're just gonna be focused on simple web design. And we're going to be focused today on wireframing versus the UI tooling that we used in the previous session. So let's get started. So as you recall from the previous session, we used user interface tooling or toolbox. We had screen elements as well as some other UI components that we could bring inside our screen elements to conclude what we believe a screen or a user interface would look like. In today's session, we're going to be using wireframing elements out of Spark's wireframing capabilities, which are way down here at the bottom. I'm not going to say they're in alphabetical order. Um, wireframing right here, you have the ability to use to, to do Android, Apple, Dialog, web page, and even the old Windows. Um, I don't know who uses that. I primarily just use the web page layout, which is what you see here and the tooling for a web page. So I have a web page screen element, and then two, I have some UI components that I can bring in to simulate what that web page could look like, and then start building out user experience from there. All right, those that know me know that I like to add a discussion namespace or package within the work that I'm doing. This is where we start off collaborating and building ideas on any particular subject. It has a cover page in it, which is blank at this particular point. And what we're going to do is we're going to add a package in here and we're simply going to call it uh, wireframe. I mean, rename it anytime you want. And we're going to create a diagram in here. And as the dialogue pops up, we're going to go all the way down in the type tooling, wireframing, and then diagram types, we're going to choose web page wireframe. I'm gonna hit okay, and there we go. I'm gonna open it, and now we have a blank wireframe diagram with the web page tooling on the left-hand side. Now I'll let you play around with patterns. I'm not gonna drag and drop this in here. This is gonna build out an example using all of this tooling and how you might want to use it. I'm not going to do that in this video. I'll let you do that on your own, right? So let's just bring in a simple web page, drag and drop it in there. And you can see we have the notion of tabs, tab one and tab two. We have the notion of a browser link or URL space, as well as some other tool objects or elements that might be in the particular space. But we're going to be focused on the workspace from header all the way down to footer within this particular page. Let's open up this property dialog and take a look closer look at this element. So we're gonna double click this to open up the dialog box to get to the properties. Of course, I've got property window open in the lower right of my workspace layout. And when we're in this property dialog box here, I've got in the very first tab that opens up is all the way down here, it's wireframe, right? And within it, I have two tabs, and here's the two tabs across. First thing I'm gonna do is remove this tab. So down here, I can simply hit remove. I can add as many tabs as I want to simulate the experience or the user experience. We're just gonna start out with one tab here. Um, I'm not, don't need to organize it up or down, left or right. So this is where we're gonna start. Let's take a further look. So we have our general property area where I can change the name of this. And in this particular case, I'm just gonna call this home, the capital H, 
versus lower cases we did for our URI uh, in our sitemap. And I'm not going to type any notes here. You can see I have properties. I've got menu, uh, memo. We'll take a look at that in a second. I can turn on and off a horizontal scroll bar and a vertical scroll bar, selected website tab. So I only have one tab in here now. Tab two is ghost because it hasn't picked up the save yet because I haven't applied. But if I had a bunch of tabs in here, when I open this, I could, it would literally open default on that tab, right? What else do we got? We have our responsibilities. So we can write, start writing requirements internally here on this, and then we can externalize them later, as I've shown you in other videos. We can start building out constraints, especially relevant to OCL in our rules. Then we have scenarios, structured editor, talked a great deal about this. We can start to build out uh, scenarios for this particular web page or user experience files. I can attach external re research and development files. For my graphics department, I can bring in image library files or URLs to our content management system. I can put in links if the uh, wireframe is relevant or associated to other elements. And we're just doing simple. When we get into more complex wireframing that's dealing with headless CMS or launch in context or other more complicated subjects like that, we can bring in links and show relevance between those. And then, of course, wireframe, which we just talked about. So we're going to dive deeper into wireframe and the properties that are there next. Now I'm going to go ahead and hit apply here. And as soon as I apply this, you can see the changes were applied. Tab one is the only tab here. I can come up and re rename this tab to whatever I want to call it. So I'm going to call the tab home as it might look in a particular browser. And then as far as the URL goes, whether you want to start out with www, I'll leave that up to you. And then put in your Whatever your URL is, you can do that. I'm going to hit apply again, and you can see I'm applying it to the wireframe. Now, if I would have hit OK, all of that would have been applied, and then I'm on the screen here where I can start doing work with various UI components. Let's bring in a few. Now, the first thing we want to do is we're going to bring in an image for our logo. We're just going to drag and drop this image element in here and put that in there. I'm going to bring in a label that I'm going to populate or is going to be populated by the site we're using. I'm just going to put that here right now. And I want to bring in a navigation bar. So down here in website controls, I have a nav control. Let me just drag and drop this anywhere within the screen because I can come in and resize this as you know we're going. So right now, if we look over under this element, and this element is composed of a label, navigation control, and an image, right? Now, they're not named yet. I can come in and name it. I can come in here and name this, and we're just going to call this uh, just simply logo. Call it, might want to give it a name relevant to the image logo, the company logo, like UML operator or UML logo, those kind of things. And as far as the label goes, we can put in uh, whatever we believe this is going to be populated with, or like we did in the UI design, we can use the uh, content reference. And I'm just going to make this up at this particular point. We know we're not going to go over 999, so our convention is three placeholders, so 001, and then site name. It could be title, uh, whatever we want to do there, right? And then we can always come in and rename that later. And then as far as the navigation bar goes, we can size this if we want, move this up around the page, take it to the outside of what our, our folder looks like, and then go from there. So in this particular case, we've added a logo, we've added a name, and we've added navigation uh, into our wireframe for this user experience. We can do other things such as, let's just double click and open up properties. We're going to go to home. You'll see the notion of image here. Uh, you can select this. And if you have images that are already loaded, now let's just bring in the UML operator logo. And I'm going to hit apply. So it'll just like a fav icon, it'll apply a logo up at the top. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. 
of a page design that you want to use or reuse. Now, the difference between using wireframe tools that are over here versus UI component, as in the previous session, is the ability to add graphics. Now, this happens to be an image control. So in an image control, I can right click on this, go to appearance, select alternate image, and I come down here, we're gonna use the UML operator logo. I'm going to size it and square it up, uh, whatever size that I want. And I'm able to add alternate images to image elements. But I really don't do this for the other elements that you see here. Like for instance, site name. I, you know, I can't come in, I have the ability to see this either using shortcut control shift W or select alternate image. But if I come in and let's say I wanna bring in this image here, which is the site name that we used in UI extension screens elements in a previous session, you see this doesn't show up. It, it's, it has the metadata there I go select the alternate image again. You can see that it's there and relevant to that label, but in whiteboarding, it doesn't show up. I'm going back to none, hit okay, and I've cleared that up. Same thing with navigation, just like in the other session around, and we'll go to sitemap, click on the right icon. You know, I'm able to bring in graphics that are over elements, navigation, this is navigation. You can see over here, this is the same element, has a graphic relevant to it. I cannot do that in wireframes, all right? So these are the differences that are here. Let's just go out and paint out some pages and use some other elements just to get an idea of the user experience that we want to wireframe in this particular screen. Now in a later session, we're gonna get into patterns. I'm just gonna show you and preview it right now. So in patterns and the fact that we're using this tooling, which is Google domain, it's Google's web design now owned by Squarespace, we have some tooling that's available. So um, I can look at it this way. This is a particular widget that you see in the tools they have available. This is another widget where it has an image and then it has content and image and content uh, horizontally. Uh, here's three images and content vertically. So the pattern or the uh, widget that you can drag and drop in your screen looks something like this. So we're able to bring in these patterns that lay out the wireframes so we don't have to continually repeat what we're doing. Let's just go ahead and do one manually here and get, get in a feel for how you might lay out a user experience within a web design. So you see in various web tooling, whether it's WordPress or Squarespace or Wix, or there's so many out there to, to do web design uh, on the fly, continuous integration and deployment capabilities within the cloud to be able to drive your website, your web look and feel, your web experience. And so, what we're gonna do is we're just going to do a couple of simple ones. So one of them is in, you might have a, a label or a text box or a paragraph, and I'm just gonna bring in a paragraph element that's in here that explains this site, right? So you bring in a widget, and when you look at this element, you have the ability, you can see it, that it has some tag, general tagging in here but you can put any content you want here to prototype just to get the content within the, in the page. Now, one of the things you don't have that you would have in other tooling is the ability to apply style or style guides. Here, you can just, you're just bringing in plain vanilla content and then you're applying your style guides after the fact. You're just, we're just doing wireframing and laying out the framework for the website. So another pattern that might be out there is where you have an image, some sort of graphic of various sizes, and you can size these any way you want, and then with content to the right of it. Now, I typically don't bring in a paragraph widget in here next to the graphic. 
I tend to bring in uh, a label because when I'm not using a static site, I use labels to populate with code. So code behind page or within an API or mining SQL data to form the content management system. Uh, I will populate a particular element within the screen that has a unique value uh, within the page. We'll get into that when we get into more advanced sessions. So I might tend to use, let me just go ahead and get this out of the screen. I might have another pattern and widget that looks something like this, where it has a graphic to the left and then content to the right. Another one would be a graphic to the right, where you might move this over here. And I mean, graphic to the right and content to the left, right? So there's various layouts. And you might do those in individual panels or individual uh, tiles or widgets or controls that are available to you within your web design tooling. Now, to speed the video up, I went ahead and pre-populated the navigation bar that you saw earlier. So you can see here we've got a nav bar that's closed. I'm going to go ahead and double click on it and open it up. Then the navigation bar, we have a home, we have topics, we have UML learning channel, papers, and then layer one, fact, and about us. There is no expansion of these. Let's go ahead and look at the learning channel. So we open it up, we have some other selections within the navigation that are under underneath it. Now what I'm able to do on this is you see it expanded, it's set to false. We're gonna set it to true and open it up. Highlighted is set to false, I'm gonna leave it. So set to false, we'll look at highlight in a moment. I'm gonna go ahead and hit apply. Now as soon as I did that, it expanded that navigation element. Let's go ahead and highlight it this time. So we're gonna set it to true, we're gonna hit apply, then I'm gonna hit okay. So in this particular case, it's grayed out. Now your style sheet might give it a particular coloring or effect when it is being mouse over, driven by a click or whatever hover, whatever the strategy is that you have within the user experience. All right, we're gonna open it up again. And you can go to each one of them and you can expand them, all of them, if you wish. Want it, uh, let's see here, let's do this. There's nothing to do them all. I usually have them all expanded uh, within the, I, by default, uh, unless I want to do something else. So in this particular case, like in a presentation, when I say do something else, I'm doing a presentation and I want to focus on a particular category or subject and the pages under, underneath it. So this is how you can use navigation, but as I'd stated earlier, you cannot apply a graphic to this experience. You're just showing navigation and you're going from there. Uh, you can't apply a graphic to the name, so you literally have to come in and go, well, what's the site name for this particular page that I want to drive to the content, right? So this may be track, OTC, it could be anything that is the name of your site. Then you can come into layout. I'm gonna show you something else here. We're just gonna set this to bold and 12 points. So I'm able to do something like that to simulate what a style sheet might do. But you, when you're doing wireframing, you're really not getting into the actual style of the experience. Uh, we'll do that in a separate tool, just as you're not simulating a code interaction with a drop down or control box or a submit button or something like that. We would use other tooling to do that, whether we're using Google Domain, we'll, we'll see that in the very end, or we're using our own integrated development environment and then launching the code and the presentation layer connected to the database where we would do our testing. But we'll talk about that in more advanced subjects a little bit later on. We're just talking about wireframing. So this is an example of doing a wireframe on a single page. All right, in this session, we talked about wireframing. This is separate from UI design. We're basically doing user experience or UX design. 
we step through some simple concepts. Let's go ahead and double click on this one and drill down where we applied some graphics to some images. We here we have a banner image that we had brought in and we created an alternate image for the banner and we're able to bring in alternate images on image items, but not control boxes or navigation. We can certainly add in, let me hit escape and get rid of that before, click on it. Um, you can certainly add in patterns and create, well, let's just drill down into this one, where you can bring in a pattern that's got, you know, an image to the left that we talked about. You've got content to the right or content only within your uh, wireframes. Go into this one. We wanted to, we're set up here using a default layout of the page that we can reuse. In this case, we've got a, a, a vertical uh, scroll bar on the right, whether we keep it or not is yet to be determined. We go through various pages. Now we're set up and ready to lay out or talk about how we want to lay out particular pages. This happens to be topics. We've got here, well, let's go down into the real item. I can double click on this and launch it. We have a label here we're using for the page description, introduction to the page. Here we've got a graphic and content. Here we've got content and a graphic. And these are all patterns that we're able to reuse from whatever the tooling we're using. Again, whatever tooling you're using, Google Domains, Squarespace, Wix, WordPress, I can go on and on. I'm sure you know all of them, right? So this is very simple wireframing and how to do it. In our next session, we're going to bring in some patterns. We're going to talk about patterns where we've developed some patterns. I've done videos on patterns, and these are going to be reusable patterns that we can drag and drop now into our open pages to be able to lay out how we want the experience to go uh, following the sitemap, the funnel navigation, the user flows, whether they're buy flows, support flows, knowledge flows. We're able to do that. The combination of sitemap, UI design, and wireframing. So I look forward to seeing you in the next session. Until then, happy modeling.